The following program is sponsored by the Hope Team, friends and partners of Keith Nix Ministries. Hello, my name is Keith Nix, and I'm delighted that you're joining us today on The Lift. Last week, we kicked off a series of messages that was the most popular series I preached at The Lift Church in 2019, a series called Conversations. I used the conversation candy from Valentine's Day. Remember, get those little pieces of candy. I never really loved the candy itself because I'm a chocolate guy. If they covered that in chocolate, it'd be awesome. But I guess if they covered it in chocolate, you couldn't read the message on it. And it's the message that was so popular when I was a child and still quite popular today. You know, the little pieces of can heart candies that say, trust me, or believe me, or you are special, or I love you, or kiss me, or hey, good looking, or you know, you know what I'm talking about. Just, just a lot of fun. And as children, we... We love to give those to one another, especially your crush. You, you want to give your crush that, that special message. And if you were shy, like I was quite a shy child, if you were shy, you, you know, you're just blushing and hoping that they get the message while you're hinting around, not coming right out and saying it. But I used that candy to talk about the fact that God wants to have conversations with us. And if God were giving you a conversation heart today, what would the message on that heart be? Well, I believe today's message is trust me. The Lord is saying to you and to me, trust me, trust me. Last week, we, we began looking at Jeremiah 17, five to eight, and there's a contrast between the cursed and the blessed. Let me just remind you that this contrast is not necessarily simply between those who are not following Christ as the cursed and followers of Christ as the blessed. But this contrast is within the family of God, within followers of Christ, you could still be living under a curse instead of under the blessing that God has for you. And so we want to find out what does it look like when you're living under a curse? What does it look like when you're living under the bless? And what makes the difference? How do we get out from under the curse? And how do we learn how to live in the blessing? So stay with me. I believe this message is going to revolutionize your thinking if you'll put your spiritual ears on and listen. Before the message, we've got a song by our team at the Lift Church. I love this song. I believe you're going to like it too. How can my feet not dance? So let's go in to the service, listen to the song, and then we're gonna flow right into the message and I'll be back in just a little while to pray with you. Sing this out. The Spirit is moving in power, He's proving Jesus is here, Jesus is here. Our faith is increasing, we are believing. Jesus is here, Jesus is here. How can my heart not praise my Jesus, my freedom? How can my feet not dance? How can my lips not sing? How can my heart not praise my Jesus, my freedom? Jesus is here, say Jesus is here, my sin was forgiven, when Jesus was risen, Jesus is here, Jesus is here, oh, how can my feet not dance, how can my lips not sing, how can my heart not praise, my Jesus, my freedom, how can my feet not dance, Our King. 
that live under a cursed way of thinking, even when good things happen, they can't, they can't see it. Come on, you ever talked to anybody and told them something exciting and they just, they just can't see it. They just, they can't enjoy a donut because it has a hole in it. And so when you look at it, you see the cake around the hole. When they look at it, they see the hole in the cake. So they'll eat it, but they'll eat it whining about what's missing. Come on, don't you know church folks like that? Don't you know people that say they're believers, but they're just like that? They'll take it from God, but while they're taking it from God, they're always talking about, well, it could have been better. It could have been this. It, come on, you know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. No matter how good someone sings, no matter how good someone preaches, no matter how much God does, there'll be someone to come up, well, that was really good, but. <laughs> That's good, Pastor, but you could have used this verse and that verse and that verse. And you want to say, well, my goodness, you complain when I go as long as I go. Uh-oh, getting quiet. Come on, they, they've got, hey, hallelujah, I'm going to pat myself on the back. And, <laughs> whew, no, no, I, God doesn't want us to live like that. Come on, because you know what I'm talking about. They live, they live most of their life in sweltering heat, lacking moisture, and just desperate to get out of here. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. The world's not fair. I'm in despair. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. The world's a mess. I'm in distress. Get me out of here. And even the motive for wanting Jesus to return isn't love for him. It's hatred for life. Uh-oh. I don't believe that's the proper motive to say Maranatha. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. I don't believe the motive is supposed to be, ouch! I think the motive should be, oh, oh, I long to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice. Come on. Cares all past. Home at last. Ever to rejoice. But can you lift your hand and say, I can get to that cares past life. Ah, before I get there. Come on, are you still with me? The blessed are, are, are pictured not as a stunted shrub, but as a tree that's growing to its full potential. 
The leaves are not brown and dried up, but they're green with light. The complete Jewish Bible translated, uh, translated it and said, with luxuriant leaves. Somebody lift your hand and say, that's me. I'm luxurious. Hallelujah. Praise God. When, even when drought is on the land, even when trouble is happening, even when there's heat. In fact, he said, their roots go so deep in the river of God. Hallelujah. That though they, listen, though the blessed enjoy the refreshing showers, the blessed are not dependent on the showers for their substance. Hallelujah. Because even in the time of drought, we are tapped into the source of the river and the streams of God that make glad the city of God. I feel like preaching right now. Hallelujah. Come on. Could somebody lift your hand if you want to live until Jesus comes for you? If you want to live as the blessed of the Most High God? Could you lift your hand and just say, Lord, here I am. Let me be. Let me be one of your blessed ones. Let me walk in your blessing. Come on. All over this room. That's beautiful. Now, how are we going to do it? Well, here's the issue. The issue is an issue of trust. Everybody say trust. trust. Remember John 10:10. 10, 10? Throw that up on the screen. They'll throw it up for you. Let me quote it. Jesus says, the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come, he said, that they, who's they? That's we. Those who believe on Jesus. Any believers? Anyone, anyone that's laid your weight over on him? Jesus said, I am come that they might have life. Now the Greek word is interesting. There are four Greek words for life. Let me just give you this one. This word Jesus uses, the word zoe. It can be translated the God kind of life. It's not, it's not animal life. It's not psyche. It's not just the natural life. It's zoe. Jesus said, I am come that those who believe in me might have the same kind of life God has. Woo. And have it... Not just a little bit, not just barely enough to survive, but have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Come on, this is what Jesus said. Somebody, somebody look at your neighbor and say, that means eternal life. That's the, that's the quantity of God's. I mean, believe the quantity of God's life is everlasting. But Zoe is not just having the quantity of God's life. It's also having the quality. Ooh. That's abundant. Is there any lack with God? Is he ever low on peace? Is he ever low on love? Is he ever low on joy? Is heaven ever worried? No. How, are there, is there any sickness in heaven? Any discouragement in heaven? Any depression, heaven, depression in heaven? No, no. So, hallelujah. When we get God's kind of life, somebody lift your hand and say, that'll change everything about me. And if you're born again, you ought to lift your hand and say, I've already got it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. You say, then why are you teaching on this, Pastor? Because while we've got it, we haven't yet learned how to appropriate it, to live in it. Hallelujah. And, and what's the root issue? The root issue is trust. Everybody say trust. trust. That's, that's why we so often, though we have it, we yet live stunted lives. We don't live up to our full potential so often. We're so constantly in need of reviving. We're always so desperate for God to do more. We're so often wilted in the heat of the day. How you doing, brother? <laughs> it's been rough. Come on. How many know in the, in, among Christians there's so many that are dry and crusty? Come on. Give somebody a crusty face. How many know some people you can tell what kind of church they go to by the way they look? One lady came to my dad when I was just a kid and said, Pastor, I've been delivered from joy. I don't smile. Dad looked at her and said, oh, I know it, sister. 
she said, she said, real super spiritual, did God show you? He said, no, ma'am, your face showed me. <laughs> we're laughing, but, but the thing is, sometimes we're just as silly. Oh, you're going to get, yeah, you're not laughing now. I just made a personal application. Oh, forgive me. But sometimes we're just as silly. We, we talk the talk sometimes more than we're really living it. Look with me at Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Now, it's easy to quote that, right? How many find it challenging to live it? Come on. I can think I'm trusting God with all my heart and, and just in a second be leaning on Keith. Or maybe leaning on you. And God says, trust me with everything. Lean your whole weight, son, upon me. Anybody getting any help this morning? God, God's sending you a love candy. And he's saying, child... Sweetheart, son, daughter, trust me. Trust me. Look with me at 1 Peter 5. We've got to bring this home. Therefore, uh, the, the, verse, verse 6 here. Therefore, uh, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Verse 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. If we go back up to verse 5. Let me read it from the Passion Translation. In the same way. Now watch this. The younger ones should willingly support the leadership of the elders. Be submitted. Young ones he says. Be submitted to your elders. In every relationship. Now he says you young ones be submitted to your elders. But then he says all of you be submitted to each other. In every relationship, each of you must wrap around yourself the apron of a humble servant. Because, and listen to these words, God resists you when you're proud. But multiplies. What does proud mean? Self-reliant. Self-sufficient. Self-able. God resists you when you're proud, but multiplies grace and favor when you're humble. If you bow low in God's awesome presence, he will eventually exalt you as you leave the timing in his hands. Come on, one of your number one issues in worrying is timing issues. Come on, uh, you're looking hard. You, you, you trust God can, you even believe he will, but when it doesn't happen in your time... Leave, leave the timing in his hands. Verse 7. Pour out all your worries and your stress upon him and leave them there. For he always tenderly cares for you. So, so what am I to do? I'm, I'm to cast my care. Now I want you to notice this. He equates, the Holy Spirit does through Peter, he equates humility with casting all your anxieties, your worries, your cares over on God. Mm. Now, it's going to get quiet because there's some worriers in the house. And when you worry, when I worry, somebody's not going to like this, but it'll set you free. When we worry, it is a symptom of pride. The root of worry is pride, self-reliance, self-confidence. I've got to figure this out. I've got to make this happen. And he says, when you're worrying, when you're living in anxieties, that word translated anxieties, translated care in the King James, that word literally is distractions. When you're living in distraction mode, when you're looking at the wind and the waves and you've taken your focus off of Jesus and his word come. So you were walking on the water, but now you're sinking, not because God has changed, not because you're out of God's will being on the water. You're now sinking because you lost your focus. 
and you're distracted by the circumstances and you're now worried that you're not going to make it. And he said, here's the secret to humility. Humility is more than getting on your knees. It's more than, than fasting. It's more than an hour in prayer. Come on, some people, I've noticed they're called to be prayer warriors, prayer intercessors, but something, something very subtle happens with, with a lot of prayer groups. They, they, they begin real well, but somewhere along the way, they become arrogant about it. Somewhere along the way, they get an elitist mentality. Somewhere along, oh, I'm losing amen. Somewhere along the way, they start thinking they're the only ones that really see and really discern and really know and somewhere along the way they start slipping into self and they don't even realize it come on he said here here's what you've got to do if you're going to walk in humility two things he uses in this passage can you lift your hand and say I got to take all my worry all my anxiety all my fear I got to keep throwing it on Jesus it's not a one-time action you got to do it today and you probably have to do it again tomorrow but but, but that's, a, that's the way you've chosen to live. I'm not going to take that on. I'm going to throw that over on Jesus. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. But here's the second thing in this passage. He said, if you want to walk in a place where God's going to bring you to the fullness of the fruitful season, you've got to learn how to submit to each other. Mm. So my relationship with God is one of throwing all my cares over to him. But my relationship with you has got to be one of mutual submission. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm open to what God wants to say and do in you. Are you still with me? Yeah. Hallelujah. How many want to walk in the trust place? Yeah. How many, how many want to live in the blessed place of life? Yeah. Hallelujah. Can you just lift your hands in his presence? There's an anointing in here because I believe there's truth. There's truth. Hallelujah. That's making us free. Listen to me. Hallelujah, how am I going to do it? Trust, I got to cast all my weight over on him. And what do we do? We won't have time, but you can turn to Psalm 1 or write it down in your notes, Psalm 1, 1, 2, 3. Let me give you the number one thing that'll help you cast your cares over on the Lord. The number one thing that'll help you learn how to live a submitted life to God and a life in community and relationship with one another. You see, some people come to church. Can I, just, can I just dig this a little deeper? Some people come to the house with the mentality that they are sent here to help straighten everybody else out. To help get everybody else where they need to be. But if you're going to walk in the blessed place, you've got to come with the mentality, yes, I believe God's going to use me. Yes, I believe God's going to work through me, and I'm thankful for that. But I also believe that I'm sent here so I can grow. Amen. I'm sent here so I can get some rough edges rubbed off me. I'm sent here. Come on, are you with me right now? You see, God didn't send you to any church to get them fixed. He sent you to be part of the process. And in the process, you're going to get fixed too. And we're going to get fixed. And we're all going to grow to be who God's called us to be. Hallelujah. We're learning how to trust. Trusting Jesus is all that matters, the old song says. So we're getting ready to pray. Psalm 1, though, Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, doesn't stand in the way of the sinners, doesn't sit in the seat of the scoffer or the scornful. Verse 2, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his word he doth meditate day and night if you're going to learn how to cast all your weight lean all your weight on Jesus brother and sister you got to become a word person you got to become a you got to become a student of this love letter because we look today we look today at one little thing but look it's this word. God says, trust me. But can somebody hold your Bible up, even if it's electronic form, hold your Bible up and say, this is God's conversation with me. Hallelujah. Verse 3 says, the blessed person who meditates the word shall be like a tree. Somebody say, I've heard that before. Planted by the rivers of water. Go ahead. Hallelujah. He'll be like a tree that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. 
and whatever he or she does shall prosper. Praise God. Isn't that awesome? The blessed is who God's called you to be. Too long we've lived like the cursed, but we can change that. This choice, and I want you to hear me now, look into my hazel green eyes. This choice is not God's for your life. This is your choice. The choice to live under a curse or to live in the blessing. The cursed never can even see the good, can't enjoy a donut because it has a hole in it. Always seeing the bad. The blessed, though, the blessed, the Bible says, even when the bad is coming, they're still thriving. Even when the, in the heat of the day and in the season of drought, they're still producing. Why? Because they're not reliant upon external circumstances. They're not relying upon the rain. They're relying on the, the underground current, the river of God. They've learned how to get their roots down into the good things of heaven so that circumstances, oh yeah, the blessed love the rain, enjoy the refreshing, but the blessed know that even if it's drought time, that doesn't mean they have to live in drought because their source is the Lord Almighty. I pray this has helped you. I'd love to, I'd love to give you a copy of the entire message. If you'll just contact us, the number's on the screen, the information there, social media, just get in touch with us. I'd be delighted to send you a copy of the entire message so that you can dive deeper into this because I believe it'll change your life. Right now, if you want to change your life, you can do it in 10 seconds. You simply pray with me and say, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Jesus, maybe you, 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 you know he's Lord, but you say, I haven't let you be the Lord of my thinking. And I'm asking you to, to help me think your way instead of thinking my way. And if you'll receive right now, I believe the power of the Holy Spirit is going to minister grace to you, and you're going to begin to live as a blessed man or woman of God and not as a Christian who's still under a curse. In the name of Jesus, write us. Let us know what God's doing with you. Call us. Let us pray with you. And if you're in the Sevierville, Tennessee area, come and visit us at the Lift Church. We'd be delighted to get to meet you. Until next week, remember Jesus is Lord. Let him be the Lord of your life.